Hey guys, welcome back to We Are Androgyny on Thursday. I'm here with Thea, one half of the voodoo dolls, and myself, the other half. <laughs> so, we are here in the cemetery today to um, tell you a couple of stories with our friend Minnie Probert, who we actually, I have a big history with this tombstone right here, me and a couple other friends, so um, that's another story for another time because we've got too many to tell today. So, okay. So one of the stories that um, I guess I'll start with is one time in this cemetery sitting right here on this very hill, uh, me and my friend Carrie, uh, Buddy, my friend Dana, and my friend JP were all sitting here having some drinks at like 3 in the morning or something if you used to. And, um, and there was a light in the sky and it lit up the whole cemetery. It was like the daytime. Did we tell you about that? Yes. Uh, you were following orbs. Huh? But it was like the whole thing. It like lit up like right there. Was like oh, you're kidding Everything me. lit up. Oh, it was I like didn't the, hear that It was that like one. the sun rose. No, so, um, yeah. It was you, like the sun rose for like a split second. It was like right there. It was like a, a thing in the sky. And it just like, it like lit up every tombstone. And only me and Carrie saw it. Like everyone else was sitting there like just talking. And we're like, what the hell was that? And, um. And everyone thought we were crazy because it was just like a flash. It was just like, and then it was dark again. And then we're like, I swear to God, I saw it. I swear to God, I saw it. And then all of a sudden, it happened again, one more time. And still, only me and Carrie saw it. It's like, how did you not see it? It lit up the whole town. It was crazy, crazy stuff. So. Oh, that's like something out of the <laughs> cat, uh, what is it, the Pirates of the Caribbean. It was the green flash. It was like that. It was <laughs> like that. So, um, so that's one story. Another story, I'm gonna tell you three. So two will be real and one will be fake. Um, another one will be one time when we were camping. Um, it was me and my father, my little brother, and my dog, Lady. And um, there was these lights in the sky, more lights in the sky. Um, we live in like a UFO hotbed here in Colorado in this valley. Um, MUFON actually has a base here, so it's really like a UFO hotbed. So we were camping, this is like maybe five years ago now, four years ago in the summer, and um, we were right here in Gypsum, like right up at Leeds, so it's not even like too far out of town. And we have an airport in town, so it was just kind of weird because we had these like two, it was two lights, but it was like as tall as the top of these trees, like it was right above us. It's like really low, it wasn't even like in the sky sky like airplane it was like down like like the top of this tree and um and so it was like two just balls of light there was no craft or nothing it was just a ball here and a ball here and it was like going over us like this and then it just like stopped and then this light on this side it went like above this one and then this light dropped another one so it turned into three lights and then it turned colors and then it went like straight up from there and then it just went and it was gone that was strange. So then I came, my dad freaks out and we were sober because I was with my father. And um, so my dad freaks out and brings us all the way back down to the house, leaves the camper there, everything. We jump in the truck, he's like freaking out, makes me call 911. Call 911, <laughs> they make me call MUFON. And it's so weird because my dad's like, I'm not saying anything. I'm not gonna look crazy. I'm like, you're the one that made me call. So they had to interview me and my little brother, and they wouldn't take my little brother's interview serious because he's under 18, and because um, he was like 12 at the time. So, uh, yeah, it was weird. And I had to go through the interview that night, then the next day, then like a month later, and then like three months later, they came to the house and interviewed us. It was weird. That was a little strange. Um, so there's another story. I'm trying to think of other stories. There's so many stories I have. Um, especially living in this house that I live in now. But I guess we'll save some more of those for interesting times later. I guess, I don't know what they say. I'll do another camping one. All right, another camping one. It says me and Dana were camping and, um, and we kept hearing like rocks being thrown and we're like a little freaked out and we didn't know what the hell it was. So um, me and Dana were drunk as usual when we were camping and um, and we were with Deanne and John, and we decided to go out and chase whatever it was. And um, we saw like a big, 
thing that was really tall and it wasn't a bear and we just ran away. <laughs> it would have been a Bigfoot, I don't know. But that's my third story. So you guys can guess and see which two are right and which two are fake. What's okay. your story, Thea? I'm only going to tell you one real story. One real story, um, yeah. I had a friend that lived in this great big huge Victorian, Victorian house um, on the main street in Grand Junction. And of course we were always into our witchcraft trying to conjure this and that and what have you. And we had the um, very utmost of the house, the attic, and we had to go up, uh, pull down a ladder and climb up. And anyway, we always left our black candles burning in there, just that smell of the licorice and that blue glow. Anyway, so we had made a wrought iron pentacle and had gotten everything prepared. And I had this black candelabra. And we had, um, of course, put in the what, six or nine candles. And uh, we were sitting there and we were calling on the Prince of Darkness. And our crystal ball glowed blue. And the window opened and shut. And it blew out the candles. And we looked at each other, kind of in the dark. And had gotten a really eerie feeling when the candles by themselves popped back on and lit up the whole room again. So we decided to bag it for that evening. That's uh, one of my stories. Well, there you have it. So there's our stories. <clears throat> um, I hope you can guess which one is the fake one out of those. So um, we will, I don't know, see you next week. Happy Halloween. Happy Samhain. Okay, good then. Ciao. Bye bye. <laughs> Good. Very good, that. Oh.